Let's try thinking outside the box today. I'm Cami with Crafting with Cami, and today we are going to take this paper pumpkin kit that I got with my Stampin' Up! starter kit and create a double page scrapbook layout. Paper Pumpkin is a subscription kit, so every month you would get another card making kit. So this one came with some dots and some dandelions. Look at that foiling, isn't that pretty? Some other punch outs. We got some um, little placeholders for your sentiments. These cards are beautiful, like these card fronts, and they have that foiling on it. We have envelopes. I love how decorative the envelopes are. And then it comes with a couple different cards. So we have this one here with the dandelions. This one with just the dandelion seeds or whatever blown in the wind. And then we also have this one. We could also use the little strip that came to go on this plastic box. So if you were going to send out a bunch of cards, you can put them in this box and then this strip goes around it. But we could use that foiling, that paper on something. And then the kits come with the instructions on how to put it together, how to subscribe. And these ones are the instructions, which there's no words, just pictures since Stampin' Up! does cater to different countries. So um, yeah, we have the instructions here. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the entire kit or just pieces of, of this kit, but my plan is to make a double page scrapbook layout out of this. This specific kit is the December 2023 kit. So it's called All the Best. When you subscribe, you'll get that month's subscription kit, but you can also access any previous subscription kits um, that are still available that haven't sold out yet. So if you become a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you can go back and see if the December 2023 is still in stock and you can get your hands on this exact kit. So I'll have the link in the description box below on how to subscribe for the Paper Pumpkin if you are interested in that. These would make gorgeous cards. I, I might set some aside to do for cards, but I'm really excited to challenge myself and see if I can make a scrapbook layout out of this. Look at how beautiful those cards are. These punch outs are these ones, and I think those would look great on the corner of photos. So anyways, let's go ahead and clean up my desk and get started. The photos I'll be documenting today are of a hike we went on, and this was at a state park, and they had one of those selfie, I don't know, it like has the map of the state park and then like the hiking trail, and then you can set your phone up on the selfie ledge and take a picture. And I just loved that. Every state park needs that for us scrapbookers. So then I got all four of us in one picture, which does not happen very often. So I was super excited that they had that stand there. <laughs> Look at my little bear. So cute. Of course, I had to take pictures of the flowers. So there were these purple, I don't know my florals, guys, but there were these purple flowers. And it was just a whole field of them. Can you see how far that goes? so pretty the picture does not do it justice and then my dane loves to rock climb so she was so cute got a picture of us some more of the trails look at how green it was there it was so pretty and forested and then me and my dane again and then we stopped and the girls had a little picnic <laughs> i swear they drank all of our water so we didn't have any <laughs> We brought one for them, one for us, but all right, you guys, I have quite a few photos, but not as many as I have in the past. So let's go ahead and get this on a double page layout. This is the general layout I'm thinking, and I do want to bring in some close to my heart wisteria. Look at how perfectly that matches these florals. So I'll bring in some wisteria, and I think it also brings in kind of that pinker tone in the rocks. You've heard me talk about these pipestone rocks before. So far, I've matted these three with wisteria. These ones haven't glued down yet. 
And then this one, I took this card base and cut off the blue side. And then I just centered the photo in the center here. And then I just cut the border a little smaller. So I do still have those scraps that I could use, you know, if I wanted to tuck them behind somewhere or something like that. So I'm not going to throw these away. I'm going to set these aside and I might be able to incorporate those somewhere else. I'm using the other half of that card base that it looked like this. So I'm using this side of it now for my center photo on this side. And I'm not going to cut it down anymore. I'm just going to center this on it and then I can cut down here. There we are. And again, I'm going to save every piece of scrap because I can use this to tuck somewhere else. I've got my photo mats cut. So I used Sundance, um, a close to my heart color that seemed to match the dandelions pretty well. And then this is the wisteria. And then these are all just scraps. So um, this one, you can actually see I pieced together three different pieces to create that frame. So just using those card bases and then this one and this one are in capri which match pretty closely to this blue from the card so the capri is also close to my heart card stock so this is what i'm thinking and i want to leave some of the boxes open this one i may just leave like this but i'm thinking for the embellishments it'd be nice to have some open squares and for my journaling I thought about putting my journaling here but this is so pretty and I have more room over here so we'll kind of play with where my journaling is gonna go I do think I need something that ties all of these photos together so if you've been seeing my last few videos I have been loving the charcoal and this tiny pad going around the edges of my paper is so convenient so I'm going to go around all of these photo mats with charcoal and that should just bring it all together and coordinate all of these squares. I cut this one down. It did have white around, like more white, so I trimmed down so there wasn't such a white border. And I was originally thinking up here, but I don't love how it is behind this picture. I'm also wondering if I should fussy cut it out. So I have my micro tip scissors and I'm just gonna cut away here so that I have more play. So I like to keep my scissors fairly straight and leave just a tiny white border going around when I fussy cut. And then turn the paper, not so much the scissors, just the paper. I'm just gonna take my hole punch, punch a hole somewhere in the middle of that white space, and then I can get my scissors in here, and it might be easier to cut out a bigger block first so that I have room to move. Let's see if I can do that. Right. Now I might be able to maneuver it a little easier. I thought my layouts were looking a little too white and plain. So I brought the Capri paper in and did just a quarter inch border all the way around and cut my white down. So now I can bring all these photos back in. So we'll go ahead and get this one glued down. I like how that just finishes it off. And then this side I'm still playing with. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure how I want that. This side, I'm, I'm thinking this is how I want it, but I don't want to adhere it yet just in case I want to tuck some stuff behind. I have a lot of white space right now. And I want to bring in some of those gold elements. I'm just not sure how I want to do that yet. So I don't want to adhere this until I can tuck behind. 
I've been playing around with some embellishments. So this is from the top of the envelope. Let me grab an envelope here. This is the bottom of the envelope. So I cut this out and added it to this square. And then this was part of the envelope that I ended up trimming. As you can see, it's not completely square, but I'm thinking of tucking it right under this photo and then I can kind of play around with it to make it look more square and even. And I did go around that in charcoal ink, which isn't completely dry yet. So it smudged my paper right there. So I might have to show a little more or move that over. And then this is from that strip that's supposed to go around that plastic box. And I just cut a little piece off of that, went around it again with my charcoal ink. And I'm thinking that'll look nice right under this photo just to bring in some more of that gold foiling. Isn't that so beautiful though? I love that gold foiling on there. I think it was from when I cut out this one. And so it was just leftovers. I just didn't throw anything away and I cut a tag out of it. So I'm thinking of adding some tags up here and I cut one out in the wisteria as well. So I could bring that purple over to this side. So I'm thinking something like this. Maybe switch them around, show more of that blue. Not really sure, or maybe offset them. So we'll do something with the tags up there. This is one of those corner pieces. I think in the, I think it was going around a circle in one of the cards. That looks awesome as well, but I am thinking of putting it right up here on this photo. And then I want to bring some more gold foiling in here. So I'm thinking right on this. And then I have those little um, dandelion seeds that I had fussy cut. And those can kind of blow out of this dandelion. So then we have some of that gold foil in each of these. And then over on this side, I have this banner, which I am going to stamp a sentiment on. I'm not sure. Always something to be thankful for. You make me happy. Say yes to new adventures. I'm not quite sure what I'll stamp on here yet, but I'm thinking that should go right about here. Bring some of that gold foil over. I have another one of those corner pieces. And I was originally gonna put it down here, which that looks nice. I like that it's kind of drawing that yellow, but it almost looks like I'm blocking that corner, like this square off. So then if I put it up here, it kind of helps your eye come this direction. It doesn't stop your eye, if that makes sense. So I think I want it up top rather than down here. And then I just feel like that needs gold foil because we have gold foil here, here. So then I have another little dandelion that I think I'll put right there. I have a smaller title right here. I could also do that in my journaling. I wouldn't necessarily have to have a big title. Typically on hiking layouts, I put where we were hiking. So this was Blue Mounds. So I could put Blue Mounds up top. But if I just did a little stamping or something that represented hiking, I could put Blue Mounds in my journaling which is also making me wonder if I should actually leave this one open for my journaling. I could do my journaling here, but I kind of wanted to bring some of that foiling in. This is actually really fun to me. Typically for hiking layouts, I would do pine, trees, browns, like more earthy tones. And this is making me step outside of my box and add purples and yellows and just brighter colors, which is really nice because my pictures aren't that bright. If you, if you take just one of my pictures alone, they're actually kind of dark. So 
adding these lighter colors, these light blues, which typically I would use sapphire. I wouldn't lean towards capri, but using these colors really brighten my photos and make them stand off the page. And you see dandelions all the time when you're hiking. And th these are kind of the same, you know, shape, but that's not a dandelion. It's purple and it's a flower, but it's just really making me stop and think and think outside the box. Not just making cards into scrapbook, but also just playing with colors more. I'm bringing in this stamp set from my stash and I'm going to use this Adventure Awaits. I'm bringing in the foam and I'm going to stamp that on this. Let's hope it fits. Ooh, it's gonna be close. I don't know if I want it that close. Second option was bringing in the Remember This Moment and this How Lucky Are We should fit across. Perfect. I'm going to bring in some scrap paper and I'm going to test out the Sundance. First, to make sure that this is stamping nicely before I stamp it directly onto that banner. But then also I can hold it up and make sure that it's going to look good next to all those other yellows. Okay, that looks good. It does match the Sundance cardstock. So then, you know, that might look good though. Let's go ahead and do it in Sundance. So I'm just going to move this over to my foam, get this re-inked up. I think this is the perfect sentiment too. We are lucky. We have state parks. We have multiple within an hour of us, so we can kind of go in any direction and find a state park. So that's going to go right there. I have not adhered this down. Um, I'm going to pop it up, but I'm actually going to type out my journaling and put it here so that I can write more in smaller print. So I will get that typed up and then I'll adhere this over that. Um, this is popped up. I popped these up. These are adhered directly down. I decided not to do the tags that were here. I just wasn't liking how it was looking with this. This is popped up. This is popped up, but this is adhered straight down. And then I popped these up on 3D foam tape as well. I am going to add a few of the gems that came along with this collection or with this paper pumpkin. It also came with 3D foam, so that's awesome. So here are those dots that came with. Aren't they so pretty? They're faceted. So I think I'm just going to add a couple to each cluster. I hope this layout helped you to think outside the box. I actually have a ton of product left. I'll show you it here in just a moment. So I will definitely be making another layout with it. I could also create the cards. Look at that foiling in there. I absolutely love that. All right, let's see what I have left. I have a ton of these punch outs. So I have some of the rounded ones. And I have one of the little ones. I unfortunately wasn't able to use this one, but I have it all cut out now. So I will definitely be using that on another project. I just didn't have anywhere to put it on this particular layout. This I decided not to use, so that I have for another project. I have two more of these cards. I have a bunch of banners left and all of the circles left. And then I have three of those, some gems. Here's all of those scraps that I didn't end up using. And I still have some of this I could cut apart too and tuck it behind kind of like I did on this layout. 
Here's some more of those scraps I didn't use, so I could use those on another project. I have eight envelopes left. Two of these cards. Two of these cards. And two of these cards. So I could put together the cards. Oh, let me pull those into frame here. I could put together these cards or I could put together another layout, which I think another layout is coming. But really, I only used maybe a third. Um, I used up more of these than a third. Um, but yeah, and I used less of a third on for some of it. So, I mean... I definitely have plenty to do, probably two more layouts, but I may end up putting together some cards, we'll see. But it's crazy how much you can get out of one paper pumpkin. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll be adding my journaling and this layout's complete. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see me take more paper pumpkins and create layouts using that, let me know in the comments below. I will have still shots of this layout on my Instagram, which is linked in the description box below. And if I create any other layouts or cards using it, I'll have those pictures over there as well. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, live a life worth creating.